Today we're back in Dragonair Silent Gods because there's a new event that lets you get a free legendary hero. So in this video, we're going to do a bunch of things. First of all, I'm going to introduce you to this awesome hero collecting game. Then I'm going to go in and show you the event. By the way, dude, these heroes look so freaking sick. And I'll talk about how you can play it well and what you can do to get the legendary hero. And last but not least, of course, we are going to review the legendary hero that you can get to talk about what it is that they can do for your team. So before I jump into the Imperial Shadow Recast event, where you can get this free legendary, allow me to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, and that is Dragonair Silent Gods. This is a game that's available on iOS, Android, Mac. It's in the Epic Game Store. It's about to be in Steam as well. So it's super cross-platform, which means you can play it wherever whenever, which is something that I, of course, really, really value. This is a hero collection game where you build a squad of heroes and power them up, power them up by improving their skills, by going in and getting better armor and weapons and more. And if you want to check out the game, use the link in the description of this video to download the game. Uh, you can go in and get started right away building out your team. And I believe it's about 20 to 30 days into the life of a new server, uh, you too will get this event, the Imperial Shadow Recast. So I can go over here into the event screen and we can talk about the Imperial Shadow Recast. There are three aspects of this event. There is the Shadow Dungeon, there is the summoning that you can do, and there is the continental challenge where you go and take on different bosses each of these gives you more of the currency you need to actually go and unlock the hero now we'll talk about exactly how you do that but you can see the event rules in the upper right when the event starts you can participate in the various challenges to get shadow amethyst you use the shadow amethyst to receive a variety of rewards in the amethyst shop including the legendary hero so there are several things here including shadow dungeon when the event starts, you can challenge different dungeons to get points to obtain Shadow Amethyst. You will get bonus points based on the clear time and difficulty of the dungeon, and we'll show you a dungeon, okay? During the event, the Shadow Dungeon will open for six rounds, each lasting four to five days. There's a summoning portion, and that means we get to do some summons, baby, and I am hyped for that. Of course, this is a game that's got pulls, and you want to pull the legendary heroes if you can, so we'll see if we get lucky there. And last but not least, we'll travel around the map together for the Continental Challenge. So let's start with the Shadow Dungeon portion of the event. As you go and do dungeons, which is what you do in this game, well, one of many things, you get points accumulated. I only have 136 points here. I need to get rolling. And at different amounts of points, you get different items. Like over here, uh, at 730 points, I get more Shadow Amethyst. Now, each of these currencies is used for different things in the game, but you can see here that in this particular round, which ends in less than four days, I can get 15 of the Shadow Amethyst, okay? So if I want to go and obtain some points now, it'll show you all the different things that you can go and do, including the Goblin Lair, the Frost Domain, the Flame Domain, and more. So why don't I go now into the Frost Domain? We'll fast travel our way over there, and we'll go battle our way through and go and get some of these points. So the reason you go and you fight this particular boss uh, is that you want these currencies. These currencies are used to level up your heroes. You need them to get past level 30 and then beyond. Um, I'm currently gated at level 50, and I need to do a number of things to power up my heroes, but let's blast our way through this. So in this game, as I mentioned, you pick a team of five heroes. I have many more than five heroes, and you pick a team that you think is going to be particularly synergistic for the challenge that you're doing. So in this challenge, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I'm just going with my highest level heroes because they're my most powerful. But if I was being super strategic, I would actually try to counter what this uh, dungeon is going to throw at me. So I'm going to start the battle here. And the way that battling works in this game is that after you've selected your position on the grid, your troops go into battle. It's not quite an auto battler because you still have activated abilities. And you can see in the bottom right, those abilities are loading up and I'm going to fire them off pretty darn soon. In fact, I'll have the opportunity to do that right now. So at this moment, I've got a 
icy armor shield that my main hero can deploy. This shield is actually, uh, this hero is actually me. That's just cool. You get to make your hero at the start of the game. Uh, this is a amazing single target damage ability, frozen spike, blast that off. I mean, I've got some super powerful abilities here. I could heal with my healer, always bring a healer. I feel like that's generally good advice. Of course, there are uh, exceptions to the rule. And we just really overpower this level of difficulty, but I'm not quite strong enough to take the next level of difficulty. So now we're in on the boss here, who was pictured earlier at the uh, entryway to this zone. And this hero, dude, Lightning Current, deals damage to enemies with range and gains buffs. This thing is so powerful. Boom! Love that War Stomp. The Minotaurs are freaking sweet. I'm going to shield up over here in my back lane. Uh, I guess that was actually my front folks that got that. And going to pop another Frozen Spike in. Boom. Fat damage there. Nice. Nice damage. Round it out. We get the rewards. So this is one of the ways that you go and you get points for this event. And I'm getting other rewards that I already wanted. So I'll make my way back to the Imperial Shadow Recast event. And I can show you that I will have accumulated a small amount of points from doing that particularly easy level of the dungeon. So here we are, the Imperial Shadow, um, the Shadow Dungeon, and I got a few more points. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you, and I am actually jumping around a little bit in the order, is the Continental Challenge. Now, there are a number of chieftains all throughout uh, the map that you can go and find and challenge. I have only found one of them so far. Um, and each chieftain has a strength that you would ideally be able to counter. So I'm going to go to the map and show you where this chieftain is. Um, he is right over here. So what's cool about this game is the map is massive. I mean, really, really, really large. And what I can do to get to where I want to go is I can actually just fast travel at any one of these teleportation circles. And then the remaining distance that I need to go, I can walk. I might actually at this point be able to directly challenge the boss, but a part of what I wanted to do is actually show you walking around the map. So as I walk around the map, there are different things that I can pick up that have different uses. Like I got some regen, I think that was grass over there. Um, there is cooking in this game, so you can create things like potions, you use those to heal. In addition, um, there are blacksmithing materials that you can go and get. This chest over here, I would need to uh, go to a series of different sort of side objectives and knock those out in order to unlock the chest. But here we are at the chief challenge. Now, I've got to say that I am pretty underleveled at level 50 to go take on a level 240 boss. Um, this particular chief challenge, by the way, um, increases the poison damage taken by enemies by 100%. So each of your heroes can only be deployed once and each boss can be challenged only once in each round of the event. Players can challenge the boss four times in the current round of the event. So I'm going to go in and smash challenge here. I don't think I'm going to lock in my score because you actually can say like, hey, do I like my score and then decide to lock it in or not? But enemies taking 100% additional poison damage here seems like you'd want to bring all poison heroes, right? Now, that's not what I have, unfortunately. And you can see each of the heroes is a one out of one. You can only use it one time during the event. So I'm just going to smash challenge here. I've got sort of a tank and off tank situation and a healer. And I am going to be very outclassed. Now, my tank is going to be able to handle a little bit of the heat here. But in just a moment, when this boss uses his specials, it is going to be quite devastating. I'm going to use my shielding ability on my front line to try desperately to stay alive, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to smash my big damage over here. Success. Boom. Get him, baby. Big damage over here. Frozen spike. Love to see it. Boom. And, uh-oh, I think I'm about to die. So I'm going to try to get this heal down right before the boss Oh, does his abilities and he killed my tanks and my character. <laughs> I told you I was a little underleveled for this particular challenge. Your boy Chiskul is going to be defeated. So once this is done, I can decide, do I want to lock in my score or not, as the boss gloats over the corpses of my fallen comrades. <laughs> so now we have some choices. Do I want to save my score or not? And I'm going to go, no, I'm not going to save my score just yet, because I have more time before the end of this stage of the event. And I can do all my challenges at the end of this stage of the event, 
rather than rushing them now. So when I go back to this, this challenge, you can see I've got four days, baby. Okay, so I've got plenty of time to go get a bunch of levels if I want to get a good score in this portion of the event, get the shards, and then go and get the hero. Technically, they're not shards, they're Shadow Amethyst, so let me be a little more clear there. So if we make our way back to the Imperial Shadow recast event, the final thing we can do is summon to get the Shadow Amethysts. So if I make my way over, we'll go to do some summons over here. And we'll see if we get lucky. Now, there are several summon alternatives here. But in order to get these rewards, I need to do the Heliolite Dice Summons. And I need to do Heliolite Dice Summons all the way up to 60 in order to get the maximum number of the Shadow Amethyst. Now, I could keep going and get Master Scrolls to increase my legendary hero skills, which like, hey, those are super valuable. But let's do 60 pulls and see if we get lucky and then see what we can buy with our Shadow Amethyst by checking out the shop. So we're going to go now and we'll smash these out five at a time, baby. Come on, let's roll the dice. Honestly, honestly, it is so fun to pull in games. It really is. Okay, Shaltar, love the name, chaotic good, with that freaking mallet that, honestly, you, I mean, you do not want to get hit by this Minotaur. Love the look on that hero. Ooh, Fira. Kind of an orc-looking dude, huh? Orc, chaotic, neutral. Okay, yeah, uh, that is what he is. Okay, Eviana, Eluia, the lizard woman, and Gusney, the lawful evil orc. Bro, here we go. We summon. Boom. One sixth of the way there. Ooh, epic. Okay, okay. But dang, he's cool looking. With the lance, Kamari riding the horse. Human chaotic good. What does he do? When the battle begins, he grants defense up to all allies within range. Charges with the enemy with a chance of knock up and radiant damage. Resurrects recently dead ally at 60% max hit points, restoring 75% of the resurrected ally's ultimate energy before death. Wow. Heals the ally with the lowest hit points if there's no dead ally. Dude, he's a healer tank? Oh, gosh. The heroes in this game are cool. They're, they are freaking cool, man. All these are heroes I've already got. All right. Let's do it again, baby. Come on. No whammies. Please. Yes, legendary. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. What do we get? What do we get? What do we get? No. Oh, Ripikas. Is that his name? Or is it Ripkus? Ripkus? He has got just a crazy looking glow to him. I mean, you know, did you know that Chiskul, my name, is uh, based off of a troll character? I made that name up. Chiskul. Okay, the troll. Um, What does he do? His passive skill, double advantage. The hero gains healing equal to 50% of the healing enemies receive. Whoa. Only takes effect once during a period. Then, the battle skill unleashes a wide range slash. Knocking up enemies. Wow. Deals necrotic damage and inflicts stun. GG. And ghost mischief, the ultimate. That's the sort of ability that we go and we activate. Uh, that's what you saw me activating in the prior fights. Launches three spirit attacks at enemies. Dealing necrotic damage to enemies within range with an 85% chance of inflicting one random debuff. Wow. Pretty cool. Each attack additionally reduces ultimate energy of the enemies. <sighs> that is really, really powerful. Uh, very hyped to have him on my team. So while working toward my free legendary, we got a legendary, baby. Let's freaking go. Wow. Okay, there's an epic. Vitamir. Okay. Dope. Let's keep summoning. I mean, how could I not? Yo, please, please, nothing. Okay, okay. The, I mean, they, ugh, bro, I love that the dwarves fly. It's just not something that you expect. Gimli taught me that you don't fly if you're a dwarf. But in Dragonair Silent Gods, yo, the dwarves, they are flying. Okay, what do we got? Dude, love the look on this guy but probably not using him. Whoa, flashy looking Alfie, the rural halfling. 
He is looking awfully fancy. All right, cool. And, oh, man, what is with the jesters, bro? The crazy jesters. Okay. Cool. Let's do another summon here. And then we'll just check in on how far we've got with the summons toward our, you know... Oh, my God, I popped legendary again. Bro, am I just lucky or what? Let's freaking go. Come on. Okay, it's got to be the next one, right? Nope. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. What? She is creepy, man. Ugh. She's like pregnant with the demons from hell. Oh my god, Premta. The unstill chaotic evil. When an ally undead summoned unit dies, deal derivative necrotic damage on its nearby enemies. So there's some summoning synergy here. Releases three spirits to attack. Look at that range. Does necrotic damage crazy. Damage attack modifier specter undead creature. Dude, do you summon a specter here? Myriad Descendants unleashes a torrent of souls during dealing necrotic damage to all enemies. Additionally, all allies and undead summon units immediately trigger tireless devotion without sacrificing themselves. Dude, she seems crazy in an undead summon team. But also, I'm not gonna lie, she is creepy looking. Wow. Okay, one more set of five. One more set of five. I think that puts us at 30 summons. Let's freaking go. Come on. Oh, epic. All right. Ooh. Dude, he's cool looking. A poison knight. Gareth. Human lawful good, but poison. Okay. Um, The affiliation, by the way, the affinity is really important. We haven't even really talked about that. But when you're building a team, there are these different elemental affinities, and they just go a really long way toward stacking what your team can do. Okay. That was insanely fun, and I did 30 summons as described. We get all those rewards. If I made my way all the way to 60, I would get the maximum amount of Shadow Amethyst that I can get from summons. But before I go and potentially do that in this video, let's go get a look at the Imperial Shadow Recast event and just talk for a second about what can you get. So we go to the Amethyst shop. So in order to get this hero... I need 200 of the currency. I am not there yet. But there are other things that I can get. For 50 currency, I can get Heliolite Dice, which, like, seems good, but the guaranteed Lego for 200 just seems like the slam dunk pick here. So the thing you're trying to do is to get your 200 to unlock this hero here. Utior. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Probably not. But, uh... He does seem like the vampire overlord that you might need for your roster. That's for sure. So let's just get a look at him real quick. I'm getting creeped out touching my neck. Is he going to turn me into a vampire? Um, what does he do? All right. Um, the passive skill. When any other hero dies, he gains 10 ultimate energy. Okay. Um, then the cavern's curse. This is the battle skill. When he's just in the battle doing his thing attacking... He deals necrotic damage to enemies within range with a 75% chance of inflicting an attack penalty and a healing prohibition. Reduces healing received by 100%. Sheesh. Five second duration on that. The Scion of Evil God. Okay, what does this do? Um, this is his ultimate. It hits the whole board and it grants defense up and resurrect at death to all allies for 10 seconds. So Resurrect at Death resurrects at 30% of max hit points after the hero unit's killed, retaining 75% of their energy before death. Bro, bringing people back to life is actually a really cool theme here for the elemental affinity that, that is associated. That is actually like spot on. Wow, that's so cool. Okay, so that is the hero that you ultimately can go and get from the Imperial Shadow recast event now you can see as i mentioned three ways to go and do this i think that smashing your way through the dungeons seems really important and being able to do well in the continental challenge seems really important from there if you have some heliolite dice saved up boom you're good to go you make it to your 200 needed to go and get the hero 
Uh, you've got actually a lot of time to do this event. At the time of this recording, it's got 18 days left, but I think this has already been running for a little while. So you definitely have a solid window of opportunity. And if I'm not mistaken, this event does pop up within, within a sort of certain amount of time after your server has been live. So if you enjoyed this video, do me the honor of downloading Dragonair Silent Gods linked in the description. A big thank you again to the makers of Dragonair Silent Gods for sponsoring this video. It's available on so many platforms, as I mentioned at the start of the video, and it's going to be available on Steam very soon as well. Now, if you want to check out other videos I've made about this game, I'm going to have cards in the end screen in just a second to help you out in your beginner's journey in the game. And man, I mean, it's the advice that I would have wanted on day one. So I hope you'll check out those vids. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.